Hallelujah. Has he ever made a way for you? Anybody in the house can say, yes, sir, he's made a way. Would you just lift your hand? I mean, I'm talking that it wasn't going to happen unless God did something. And God did something. Look across this room. Hey, Amen. Look at every hand that's raised. These are testimonies. It's not just songs we sing that sound good and rhyme. It's stories that are true. I wonder if you've got that hand lifted Amen. If somebody next to you, why don't you link up with somebody? Amen. Connect with. If there's someone here that you, you're in an impossible situation, come on. If you're in a situation where you know if God does not do it, it will not happen. Why don't you just find somebody with their hand lifted? I want you to connect with that person all across this building and begin to pray. Why don't we begin to pray, God, for the situation in your life? Yes, we're going to give. But the primary reason we're here tonight is to see God do the miraculous in your life. Come on, the reason we have a church building is so that God can make a way. I don't know what it is you need, but I know there's a God that parts Red Seas. He can cease the earth from spinning on its axis to extend. Amen. Time. He's a God that can do anything. And tonight, Father, we come. And I pray, Lord, for every lifted hand, dear Father, that declares they have a need. I give you praise for every hand that's lifted that declares you are able and there is nothing you cannot do. And we ask you, Lord, to work the miraculous. Whatever the situation is, whatever the circumstance transpiring, I pray, Lord, that you would open doors, make a way, heal the body, be a God of provider, provision, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We know you are able and we're going to give you praise. I wonder if we could do that together as one people just give the lord great praise for everything he's doing he's made a way he's made a way yes he has he's a way maker if i get a little more monitor thank you choir as you return to your seats and turn to jeremiah 32 we're going to read 6 through 15 from the new king james version and we want to uh Tonight, of course, is an exciting night because we're also breaking our fast. And I know some of you are uh, planning that with a, a large pizza and a big pasta. You might want to be careful. Uh, just, just a word of caution. Probably not best to break seven days. Your, your stomach hasn't had anything. And I know you want to give it a big fat Taco Bell. But it might not end up well. Uh, if you do that. So uh, it'd probably be wise to break it with something light, soup. Uh, that's nature, at least your first meal, kind of when your way. If you need more information, it's in the paper that we gave you on how to break the fast. It'll help you a little bit. And uh, But it's been great, amen, uh, crucifying our flesh. One thing about after you've done eating tonight, there's some sense of regret. You're like, man, I've, I've really built that up higher than it was. I could have went another day. I could have done it one more day. And uh, and then you're like, but anyway, I'm glad I did it because it's over. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 32 and 6, if you're there, say amen. Some challenging names in this, and uh, I'm thankful that I didn't, none of you, listen, if you, any of y'all are thinking of naming your kids some of these things, please reconsider, okay? Um, I like traditional names. It's easy. And Jeremiah said, the word of the Lord came to me saying, behold, Han Hanamel, the son of Shulam, that your uncle will come to you saying, buy my field, which is in Anoth, for the right of redemption is yours to buy it. Then Hanamel, my uh, uncle's son, came to me in the court of the prison, according to the word of the Lord, and said to me, Please buy my field that is an in Anoth, which is in the country of Benjamin, for the right of inheritance is yours and the redemption yours. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. So I bought the field from Hanum Hanumel, the son of my uncle, who was in Anoth, and weighed out to him the money, 17 shekels of silver, and signed the deed and sealed it, took witness and weighed the money on the scales. So I took the purchase deed, both that which was sealed according to the law and custom, and that which was open. And I gave the purchase deed to, to Barak, Baruch, I'm sorry, the son of Neriah, son of Meshiah, in the presence of Hanamel, my uncle's sons, and in the presence of the witnesses of who signed the purchase deed before all the Jews, so sat in the court of the prison. Then I charged Baruch, before them saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, take these deeds, both this purchase deed, which is sealed and this deed, which is open and put them in an earthen vessel that they may last many days. 
For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. Simple title, I would just say, buy the dip, buy the dip. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to buy the dip. Father, I thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your kindness, and your compassion. Tonight, as we open our hearts, our spirits, Father, and our minds to receive what thus saith the Lord, I pray, Father, it would be received readily. I pray now, Lord, that as we conclude this evening, that it would be one of sacrifice, and above all, that your presence would meet us in this place. That is our heart's desire. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and as one people, you said amen. amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Warren Buffett, I'm reading his... Uh, book about his life, um, and uh, the reason he is one of the richest men in all of the world is a statement he makes. He says, well, I buy when everyone else is selling. He said, and I sell when everyone else is buying. And that's just how you make money. And now, uh, I, I, I read a little bit of philosophy and, uh, and prophets, but of all that I've read, there's none that surpass, no doubt, the wisdom of Mr. Murphy. Murphy had some laws that I think are just, uh, just really good, and they're true, and here they're extremely accurate. For example, friends will come and go, but enemies accumulate. Another one of his laws is that beauty is only skin deep. Ugly goes to the bone. No one's life, liberty, or property are safe while Congress is in session. If you're feeling good, don't worry, you'll get over it. Mr. Murphy said that when you have climbed the ladder of success, you will find the ladder was leaning against the wrong wall. He said, if everything seems to be going well, you obviously don't understand the situation. No, no good deed goes unpunished. Now, this is a bit pessimistic, you say, Pastor, but, but for our prophet tonight, this would actually be an optimistic statement. For uh, Prophet Jeremiah, if you're depressed, it's probably not the book to read. The man lived in a constant state of seeming depression. He was pretty, pretty pessimistic about things. Uh, and our passage this evening finds us in the context of it that Judah is not going well. Things are not going well for him or for the country that he loves so much. Nebuchadnezzar's army has laid siege, siege to the city. Many of the children have already been taken captive to Babylon. The city is in imminent danger, and those uh, children, like I said, have already been captive. Uh, th these were the last days for Jerusalem. As we read tonight in his writing, they are about to be destroyed by their adversary. And Pastor Jeremiah, who loves his people, who loves the, the city Jerusalem, has to preach the truth. And the truth is simply bad news. And that's the hard part of being a pastor. Sometimes you got to deliver the bad news. And the bad news was the city's going to crumble. He's, he's preaching and he's not very popular. It was a very, a very grim mood. And his life constantly in jeopardy. And at the moment his future uncertain. In the preceding chapters of Jeremiah, God has reached to the nation of Israel over and over, specifically reaching for this region of Judea. Yet the people had provoked God. They said, no, we don't want to follow him, turning constantly to false gods. And the wrath of God is now going to be poured out on them. It will be executed by one named Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. Pastor Jeremiah kept trying to tell them the truth, but because of, of his preaching, he, he, instead of listening, they cast him into prison. And then eventually he would be left into an abandoned cistern. I tell you, when people get it out for the preacher, they get it out for the preacher. Judah was destined for defeat. That is what he had told. They would be taken hostages. Their children would become servants and slaves in the foreign country. And Jeremiah knew it. And there was nothing that he could do to stop it because it was declared by God. And he, he refused. He said, I refuse to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you the truth. And the truth is, it's not good news. And so in prison, prison he continues to preach. And that's what we're reading at, and in the context of our reading tonight. And it was at this moment, this moment, this most, as we would say, inopportune, maybe discouraging time, that God says, let's have a little talk, Brother Jeremiah. It's amazing that God always wants to talk when sometimes the most inopportune times. But he had a word, and he said, I'm going to talk to you. Now remember, again, the city surrounded. The government is collapsing. The enemy is at the gate. Jeremiah is in prison. 
People are packing their bags. Uh, every home has a for sale sign in the yard. Businesses uh, on every, uh, are pretty much boarded up. If you walk down the city streets, uh, there's b- businesses that have no business or they're doing the 99% off, we're closing tomorrow sale. They're done. It's this moment that God says to Jeremiah, I want you to do something. It's crazy what I'm going to ask you to do, but I want you to do this. I want you to purchase land. Now, now listen, it's hard to buy land in prison. And that doesn't really make sense. But but what's even crazier is it's really not smart to buy when literally every single person is selling. Listen, I'm talking about buying stock in 2018 in Kmart. Y'all remember? Anybody remember Kmart? Yeah. They died. And if you had stock in Kmart, you lost your money. And so if, you, if, if it's 2018 and you're buying Kmart stock, you're kind of an idiot. They just went bankrupt. They're going under. It's over. The store is done. Amen? And so they're under siege. And such is the case of Jerusalem. They are under siege. They are defeated, and the land has already been occupied. The deeds of the Israeli people have already been acknowledged by God, and they have been found wanting. And now they, they, they prepare for an exodus. They can prepare for total destruction. No one is buying. Everyone is selling. But here's the word of the Lord to Jeremiah. The Lord's of host of God. Take these deeds, both this purchase deed, which is sealed and this deed which is open and put them in an earthen vessel that they may last many days jeremiah he said i want you to make a financial investment and this investment that you're going to make is in the promise that i'm going to give you i know it looks like everything's going under i know it looks like everything is failing and i know everyone else is selling but you take my word it's not always going to be down right now is the time to buy so you need to buy right now buy when everyone else is selling (laughs) jeremiah made a financial investment in god's promise jeremiah's investment was an incredible act of faith. What we do with our hands is faith. What we do with our mouth is faith. What we do with our feet is faith. But what we do with our finance is the true measure of our faith in God. I'll say that again. The true measure of our faith in God is linked to our money. He said, where your money is, that's where your heart will be. He said, I, come on. He says, I'm not going to compete with money. God and mammon. He said, they do not compete. The only thing competing with God is money. Come on, somebody. And Jeremiah was an act of investment and in, in an act of faith. Uh, faith that moves and responds to the, to the promises of God, not the circumstances around it. Ah, this doesn't reconcile well, but, but his circumstance, uh, amen, did not allow him to change his faith in God. Amen. Circumstance said the time is wrong. But faith said, no, 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 it's not just about today. Circumstance can tell you the enemy is at the gate, but faith told Jeremiah, come on, God is with us, uh, and there is a future. Uh, Circumstance will tell you defeat is certain, but faith says victory is the ultimate thing. Uh, Yeah, we might lose a battle, but in the end, come on, somebody, there is victory, and it is ultimate. Uh, Circumstance will tell you, come on, there's no time. Jeremiah, what are you thinking? Taking a risk right now. Come on, but faith is spelled risk. You're going to have to learn how to take a risk. Circumstance says we have no future, but faith says God holds our future. Circumstance says I can't afford to obey God, but faith says I can't afford not to obey God. Circumstance says the situation's hopeless, but faith says there is a tomorrow. Hallelujah. So Jeremiah's investment, it was was not for his enjoyment, but for future generations. As I told you guys a few weeks ago, uh, several years ago, a very smart man uh, that I consider smart in finance told me, he said, you need to buy a couple Bitcoin. I thought, oh boy, that's been a roller coaster ride. And I saw him a couple weeks ago And he said, you did not purchase that for your enjoyment. He said, you purchased that for your children's future. Only only 44,000 people, I'm sorry, 475,000 people will own one Bitcoin. 
He said in, in the entire world of 8 billion people, he said as time moves on in the future generations, your kids, if you give them one, he said you will be giving them like a downtown apartment in New York City. Now, I'm not telling you to go buy Bitcoin, but what he told me, and it resonated, it's echoed in my, my mind for that the last few weeks uh, has been this. It's been you not, you did not, he said, you're not buying this for your enjoyment. Do not cash out. He said, do not cash out. This is for your children and for your grandchildren. He said, I will not enjoy this. Uh, I'll enjoy other investments, but this is what I'm doing for my children. Now, I'm not saying he's on fire for God, but he's a pretty smart cookie. And there's some things I invest in and that are not for my enjoyment, that I make an impact in a future generation, that my great-grandchildren can say it's because of my great-grandfather, that I am here and I am blessed. I am, come on, somebody, the Vanderbilt's families and whatever, they are blessed. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, of God of Israel, take these evidence, this evidence of this purchase, both which is sealed and this evidence which is open, and put them in an earthen vessel, that they may continue many, many days. When we invest in the promises of God, ladies and gentlemen, we are not just investing in, in our enjoyment. We are investing in the generation beyond us. Amen? Amen. Jeremiah's act of purchasing this land, it is, it is a significant, significant matter. It is a, an incredible opportunity. It is, of course, to you, you're sitting there thinking, well, what, it's just a piece of land. I, I buy land and sell land. I bought a house and sold a house. Uh, but, 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 but this isn't just land. The land we're talking about tonight is not ordinary land. The land that he is purchasing is promised land. God said, I want you to buy promised land. The land that I promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I want you, the, the, the land specifically we're talking about is a little area of Judea with Bethlehem in it. You have an opportunity, Jeremiah. Everybody's selling. They're selling the whole land, but that land has a promise to it. There's a promise. I gave it to Abraham. I gave it to Isaac. I gave it to Jacob. I've got a promise on that land. I know everybody else is selling, but if you'll buy, buy the promise. Buy the promise. Buy the promise, because if you'll buy the promise, I can't fail. Woo! And while everybody else had for sale signs, while everybody else was trying to dump it off and, and run for fear and property values have plummeted and real estate in Judea is going for pennies on the dollar, everyone is trying somehow to get a little something for the little land they have, selling their future generations down the river. God is telling Jeremiah, while they're selling, you buy. While they're selling, you buy. So everybody else is. They're out in the yard. They're packing their U-Hauls. They're, they're trying to make a plan, get a little bit of money they could, they could get in Jeremiah. He's on Zillow.Judah.com. He's looking at houses. Come on. He's saying, which one am I going to? Oh, my goodness. Are you going to tell me I can get that for that? I, I, he's shopping houses in promised land. I do not deny that our nation is in peril. There is no doubt that the enemy stands at the gate of our generation. In my life, which has been short, I'm 42 years of age. I have never witnessed the darkness, and I was raised in Amsterdam, and the wickedness that prevails against us, the perversion that is what our children in just kindergarten is being taught. It's unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. It's fear that's palatable. You can feel it. Uh, the, the fear of government, the fear of the economy, the fear of our culture, the fear, the, the combative nature. Now the, the conversation of, of American civil war is on the tip of even normal people, not the weirdos. Come on now. Left and right. What a challenging, what a scary, what a fearful time. And in this time, there are people that sell out. I see it. I see the church is selling out on doctrine and selling out on truth, but, but I see a promise. Uh, Matthew Tuttle sees a promise. Eastgate Church sees a promise beyond the problem. And here's what I determined. I'm not selling. I know truth is being sold for pennies on the dollar. I know holiness and righteous living is being sold easily and given up on, but I refuse. There are some things I'm not going to sell. Truth is not for sale. One God, Jesus, name, tongue, talk, and I'll run a new birth, not for sale. Commitment is not for sale. Holiness and righteousness, separation from the world is not for sale. Worship is not for sale. Dancing is not for sale. I'll running's not for sale. Preaching's not for sale. Revival's not for sale. Prayer. 
I said, we're not selling. Come on, we're not selling. However, tonight, we're going to do more than just refuse to sell. Let me say that again. I'm going to do more than just say, well, I'll hold. Nah, while everybody else is selling, I'm going to buy. I'm going to invest. I'm going to invest. This is our, how, how are you going to, Pastor Tuttle, what are you thinking investing in this hour when Christianity seems to be fading in the world and evil seems to, seems to be prevailing? I'll tell you why I can invest with confidence. Because there's a promise. <laughs> There's a promise. I'm investing in a promise that God gave to Abraham and J Isaac and Jacob, whose sons I am through faith. Come on, we taught you in Sunday school. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had, and you are one of them. You are one of them. And guess what? The land's for sale, and it's going cheap. It's the time to buy. It's the time to buy. I know it's a strange purpose at a strange time. And I, again, I don't deny that much has been lost in the families and churches and communities in our nation. But I'm not going to join the course of auctioneers who, who are selling out. I'm going to buy. I'm going to buy. It is here as I read this passage that I watched Jeremiah literally invest his life, his money, into the promises of God. And that's what we're doing this evening. We too are making an investment into God's promise. I am putting my money into God's promise. I've made a lot of investments. Some I've lost and some I've won. But this evening I will invest in something that's not temporal. I will invest in eternity. A promise from God. As I invest, it speaks to what I cherish. What I invest in speaks to what I believe in. Someone said, well... Why do you not invest in that? I said, I don't believe in that. Why do you invest so much in real estate? Because I believe in that. It's, it's done, done me well. And so I invest in it. And our investment tonight speaks. I said, the investment I make tonight speaks. And the investment I will make tonight will be greater than any earthly investment I've made in any land or any deal. Because I have more faith in the promise of God than I have in, come on somebody, in a rent house. I have more faith in the promises of God than I do in Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies or stock markets. I have more faith in the promises of God than I do apartment buildings, hotels, and motels. I have, I have it. I have more faith in God than a duplex. I'm telling you what, I've got faith that when I, I just believe it, I believe with all my heart that I can't outgive him. I can't outgive God. And so it is that as we give tonight, it is an indication that we see the church as a hospital for the lost and hurting. That's what we believe. What you give to is what you believe in. Come on, when I give tonight, it's proof that I see the church as a place for ministry, for our teens, for our children, for young families, and for drug addicts, for broken and afflicted. Come on, when I invest in this, it shows the world that I see the church, come on, as laying claim and not selling out. When I invest in this, we see the church as the salt and the light of the world. I know some have sold. And the word on the street is that the church no longer matters. But Brother Tommy, I'm buying. Some are selling. Selling out to the idea that the word of God is outdated and irrelevant. But I'm buying. Some are giving up on the church. Saying they can't impact the next generation. But I'm buying. All the newspapers are saying... Uh, you know, uh, faithfulness and worship, it's a blue light special. But I'm buying. Come on. I remember sitting in my office. I used to work for Lincoln Financial Group. And I, I got in there because on the resume, one of the requirements was that you had a master's degree in finance. And so I, I, I put, just tell you the story, it ain't my notes, but I, I put on my, on my uh, resume, I put that I had a master in finance. But then I put the com in parentheses, I said completion date. And I put six years down the road. I knew if I could just get in front of whoever was interviewing me, I could talk them into giving me a job. I had faith. So I, I did. I got, I got in, in front of these people. I had a whole, there was like six people interviewing me for this job with Lincoln uh, Financial. And uh, they're like, all right, do you have a Series 6? I'm like, no. you have a Series 7? No. Hold on. 
you don't have a master's. You, you don't even have a finance. Do you have any degree? I'm like, uh, associate's degree in theology, and I'm working on my business degree. And they're like, why? What? what? And they started laughing. And uh, anyway, they, they gave me the job. I got the job. Yeah, it was great. Talked them into it, you know, worked, pulled the whole Holland thing. It worked great. And uh, I got this job, and I'm, I walk my first day, and uh, everybody in there is like 50 years of age, and I'm 20-something. I'm a kid, you know, and uh, they give me the job. They actually ended up paying for my education, my Series 6, my Series 7. I got it all paid for by them. Isn't that amazing? And so I'm this young kid. I don't know anything. And Google IPOs, and I'm thinking, which initial public offering, Google goes on the market. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, I, I told my people around me, finance is what we did. I said, I should buy Google. I'm going to buy Google stock. And all of them, all of them, I'm talking the pros, the Series 6, the Series 7. These guys, this is what they do for a living. They're financial advisors and consultants. They're like, oh, man, Google's garbage. You need to buy Yahoo. I said, I think I'm going to buy Google. And I did. I, I didn't have a lot of money. But I bought Google while they were buying Yahoo. Hey, and a few months later... I was going, Yahoo, who, who? <laughs> Who's Yahoo? I'm Mr. Google sitting here. Come on. The whole world, everyone, or all the smart people said, it's bad. But there was just something in me that said, no, I know a good investment, and I just have a sense that this is going to work out. And you know what? I have more than a sense that this is going to work out. I have more than a feeling that this might just be a good investment. I have more than an idea that this could be flipped into make me 100% profit. I've got a promise. I've got a promise from heaven. I've got a promise. So go ahead and put revival on clearance. I'll buy it from you. Put holiness on a blue light special. I'll buy it from you because I believe it's a buyer's market. It's an opportunity for revival like we've never seen. So let's buy. Let's buy when they're selling. I see a God called church. I don't see a church going under. I see a God-anointed church. I don't see the church failing. I, I have the promise of a powerful church, an unstoppable church. It's a difference-making church, a devil-stomping church, a, a victorious church, Brother Randy, a generational and a multicultural. Come on, you know what's going to break the stronghold of our, our town's history? It's going to be the church. Come on, you know it's going to be a church with black and white and brown. The Democrats can't fix it. The Republicans can't fix it. CNN and Fox News can't fix it. Leave it to the church. They're going to fix it. And I'm going to tell you, the stock's going up. And I'm buying the dip. I'm buying I said, I see a church uh, that will rise from the ashes, uh, that will rise to the strongest position in the land. I see a church that possesses the land. I see us possessing the land. And as I close, I refuse. I refuse to allow Caleb to take that mountain alone. I'm not going to let this night end with one flag. I'm going to add mine to it. Thank you, Brother Goss, for planting that flag. Thank you, for generation prior, for your sacrifice. But I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to let you sacrifice alone. I'm not going to let you leave a legacy that you handed me something and it died at my, at my bus stop. I'm going to make it what you've given me and I'm going to take it and join you and I'm going to possess the land. I don't know how many flags will be planted tonight, but I promise you there's going to be two. There's going to be Matthew Tuttle's and there's going to be that one right there of the generations before us. And I don't know where you're at, but my invitation to you tonight is join. Let's join together. Join me. Let's join previous generations. Let's take a flag and let's say that we're not going to let Caleb do it by himself. Uh, the mountain is ours. We are well able. We can do it. We can do I said we can do it. Well, how? I don't even know, but I know we can. How much? I don't know, but I know we can. God has always provided. God has always provided. He will not fail now. I said he will not fail now. So we stand to our feet tonight. 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 says, So let each one give as he purposed in his heart, 
not grudging, grudgingly, or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. Before we conclude, I want this tonight to be a cheerful gift. While it's a sober moment, it's also one of great joy. We get to give into the kingdom of God. We get to invest into the promise of God. There's no greater investment than the promise of God. You should already have your card. I want you to take it out and just wave it. If you don't have, amen, would you just wave your hand? One of our ushers is going to come by. If you need a pen, you can wave your hand, ask someone in your vicinity, and then you can be seated. I want you to go ahead and be seated. Tonight, as we come, we will take a flag. Each giving member will take a flag with their card. Prior to laying your card, commitment card, into the basket, you're going to take that, uh, that flag that's in your hand, and I, I want you to plant it into this, this ground. To lead off the charge after we've completed our, our card, uh, I'm going to have a couple groups of people do it, and then we will come as a corporate body. But before you do so, I do want us to take a moment, and I want us to pray. I'd like you to bow your head very quickly, amen, and close your eyes. Heavenly Father, right now, as we stand on the precipice of an incredible moment, a promise that lies before us, a land that is ours to possess, I pray now, Lord, that we each take responsibility. You've spoken, Lord, to us. We've heard your voice, and now we respond to the promise. We're going to buy, Lord, when the world seems to be falling apart and it seems to make no sense to buy into this thing, we're going to do it because there's a promise linked to it that this thing will rise again. It will be given back in the name of Jesus and one people we say amen amen Amen. so you have a possess the land pledge card and I want to go over that with you quickly some of you perhaps have already completed for those that there are perhaps uh, have you maybe completed it wrong uh, let me get that let me get that fixed just to help you and our our team Uh, there's two parts one of them to the left you see it says for me That'll be the one you keep. And then there's a perforation, and you can rip it for the church, and you'll turn that one in tonight to us. The disposable income, that's cash reserve. This is not your net worth or how much cash you have. This is how much cash you can give, okay? Does that make sense? So this is not how much you have in the bank right now. This is how much you are planning to pledge in the uh, the next three years. The next one is disposable assets. This would be things that you say, okay, I'm going to sell this, and it will be worth this, and that's that little box there. Monthly giving. You'll see a little line there that's multiplied by 36 months. So what you will do, if you're making a monthly pledge, you will just put that in. So if it's $10, then you will multiply that by 36 if you need assistance ask somebody with an iphone fun okay fundraisers fundraising so this would be areas where you plan to uh, do fundraising selling links whatever didn't uh, tlc did amazing on links yesterday by the way they 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 just killed it uh great job and then the faith portion is the part that you're saying okay god this is where you've spoken to me i've i've been fasting for the last two weeks and now lord i'm going to put this down by faith Then you will add those numbers up, and your total miracle pledge is the total pledge of all of those lines combined. Now, you don't have to fill in every line. If you say, hey, I'm just going to do disposable cash and monthly, that's fine. It doesn't matter. But you're going to add those two or three, whatever, together, and that's your total miracle pledge. So just so that we're clear, uh, uh, take another moment and, and complete that. And then we will take a flag in hand, and we are going to plant that flag as our musicians come, and uh, we're going to march and just have a good time. Amen? There's no greater Sunday at Eastgate Church than Beyond Borders Giving Sunday, and I believe tonight will be far, far exceed anything we've ever done in that, in that field. Amen? Now, after we have completed, what I would like us to do is, if you were here, I'd like, there's a, a great crowd, if you were part of the group that came over from North End. You, you walked over, drove over, however y'all did it. Uh, would you just stand very quickly if you're here and you made that journey? You could have been a child. Amen. Awesome. Wow, there's not very many, but we honor you. 
And the way I want to honor you tonight is by giving you, I'd like you to lead the charge. I'd like you and your families to take a flag in one hand. And I want you to take that pledge card in the other. And I want you to come and, 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 and respectively just place that flag into this soil. They tell me it's pretty hard soil, so you're going to have to really use your muscles and put that in. And uh, as they come, amen, uh, we're going to play a song here. And then we are going to commit. But isn't this an incredible group? I, 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 when you come and put your flags, if you would just stay for a moment. Go ahead and put your, come on, Brother Rodney. But I want you to stay around the front. I want us to get a picture of this group. This is an incredible group. I think they're worthy of a, a great applause. What, a, what an incredible, outstanding, monumental night. Amen. Hallelujah. You place that pledge card in these baskets, these large brown baskets. There's four, two on either side. Look at that. Stay up here if you would. I wonder if there's someone that could grab a, just a picture. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Amen. The Nash up there, grab one. Amen. The Goss. This is a group that they've done it before. And now they do it again. There it is. Yeah, you got to put it in there. We're putting it in so it can't come back out. Hallelujah. Look at this group. For those of you not familiar, the church that they call North End is across from Bayou Cafe. It's called Grace Church now. Uh, and uh, aren't you so thankful that this group was it 40 years ago? Something like that. 40 years ago made a pledge and a commitment and because of their commitment their pledge we're here today amen grab that picture there you go thank you brother Eduardo amen why don't we give him another hand thank you guys y'all can be seated you can return to your seats it's filling up tonight it's going to be exciting I had uh, I have the privilege to have the greatest parents and I I'm thankful for my mom and dad. We have heroes of the faith that attend our church. And uh, my mom and dad, along with Brother and Sister Smith, are missionaries. I will tell you, God has gifted this church to have people of this caliber, the missionaries that served for their, pretty much their entire ministries, went into countries and opened those countries and truly possessed foreign lands. We are honored to have them. And so tonight I'd like to honor Brother and Sister Smith, and I wanna honor my mom and dad. I'd like them to stand I want them to come. I want them to place, if you'd place your flag right here to my right, amen. These, are, these right here are veterans. You know what we do for American veterans? We stand to our feet and we clap our hands and we honor them. Let me tell you, these are veterans that did something even greater. They left family and friend to attack foreign foe, not in the natural, but they said, give us this land. And now there are nations with churches because of these couples right here. And we get to go to church with them every Sunday. Aren't we blessed? Come on, and I'm telling you, if they said we can do it, I just have a confidence. Uh, come on, with the history that we have, with the heritage that we have, uh, that we are going to possess the land. I said we're going to possess the land. There's going to be children saved. Uh, lives will be transformed. I believe it with all my heart. Uh, thank you, Mom and Dad. Thank you, Brother Sister Smith. You can be seated. Amen. The remainder of us that, that are here, beneficiaries of the sacrifice, of those that gone before it is now your duty our call and responsibility to rise to the occasion and say the land is before us we're going to possess the land I want you to take that flag if you would in your hand we're going to just take these first two sections i want y'all to come amen actually just y'all come but then go back to your seat make sure remember we're, remember, we're full <laughs> so come I want you to plant that flag and then I want you to place it I'm asking you to place it in one of these baskets your commitment amen these two sections y'all come on y'all come on as well we'll just do it together we'll march up here amen and we're going to possess the land 